the thing about social action is really it's a situation where you're aware of a need and you're going to demonstrate the extravagant love of God. So I think you could be putting on a food bank, you could be providing lunches for people in the afternoon, say school meals, they don't get school meals in the summer holidays, you put that on. So it's anything that demonstrates the extravagant love of God just to serve and love the community. John Stott, who's an amazing theologian, went to a conference at Lausanne and said that social action and proclaiming the gospel were two sides of the same coin. So what we need to understand is what the scripture says, that I give you a drink of water, but I give it you in Jesus' name. So social action or serving our community builds the credibility of an opportunity to share the gospel. It's not always a given, but once we've earned the right by loving people, loving our communities, doing up someone's home that's in a right state and we put in a crowd and we make it happen, that then builds an amazing opportunity for the gospel. So I was in Preston, um, just at the time there was a massive flood. Preston's in the north of England, by the way. I'm now at Clevedon, but, and this particular church, it was on the floodplain. They'd seen a whole stack of people's houses flooded. The church then said, we need to get involved in this. I was up there. The credibility of what the church did was enormous because they decorated people's homes, they provided food for them, and all of a sudden, the council said, the one institution that really has come is the church. And that's a great way for the church to love people, meet a real need, and then as a result of that, you see the credibility of what we do as church is loving people, serving people, and proclaiming the gospel. I think so often, when we think of social action, we'll do something to people. The best way you can do social engagement within communities that have real need is to do it with people. So we in Rugby, where I live, there was a school that was really struggling to get funding to decorate the school. It was quite a, a rough area, quite a difficult estate. So the church said, we're gonna do this, but we then went round to supplies of paint, hardware, and we told them what, they were do what we were doing. They all donated to enable us to do this. And all of a sudden, the church was at the heart of its community, doing it with the community. So we recruited a whole stack of blokes who don't always cope well with church, but getting their hands dirty, doing something in the community. We did that together with the church and it built some amazing relationships where they've said, any other project you want to do like this again, we're in, we want to be a part of it. And sometimes it's a blokey thing to make a real difference and just rock up and they did the decorate and they cleaned the garden. We did some great carpentry around. It was just a fantastic thing. And the school, which was a junior school, had a facelift and they loved what we did. And we did a Thanksgiving service in the church where all these blokes turned up, the headmaster turned up, person from the council turned up and just said a massive thank you for what we did. I think there's a few things you need to do. The first is to pray. The second is to open your eyes and see where the needs are. Every initiative that you've seen, I mean, William Booth of the Salvation Army, he did, he was walking through the streets of London one day and he saw this factory that was making matches and people were dying making the matches. He was so appalled by it that he found out how to turn this around, and you may not know this, but William Booth of the Salvation Army created the safety match. So he created a factory where people no longer died, and he built a brand new factory where they created the safety match. So rather than say, I'm gonna criticize this, this is terrible, this is awful, what's happening to people, he saw the need and then thought, I could do something about this, I could make a real difference. 
And the other thing to understand is that God's heart is for the poor and for the broken. So if you can see a need that he already sees, get involved, pray, and then take some action. The guy that started World Vision was a guy called Bob Pierce. And Bob Pierce said, find out what is breaking God's heart, let it break yours so that you then take some action. And World Vision now is in some of the poorest areas of the world, serving them, relieving poverty, and building income generation cottage industry projects to change the state of those people's lives. So when you see it, pray into it, and then find a way that you could meet that.